Hawkins and we're back for the second part of our crossbar with the uh, Miller crossbar that could be used in the Century, the Vulcan, and the Holmes or the Challenger line in medium and heavy duties. Uh, we talked earlier about the frame forks and now we're going to go into some of the features that we can do and again we talked a little bit about in the older days how the Europeans had to remove the crossbars to start seeing some of the various attachments that we're going to show you right now. So the first one we've done is we've taken our fork holders and we put that into a high position and we've moved those fork holders in close. And what we have here is a very slick panel hook because the panel hook has a multitude of features on here. We're gonna do some two or three or four different things off this one attachment that we offer. So with the panel hook into place, your safety pins put in here to secure it. You have the means of using it as the panel hook. It has a 15 ton capacity. You can open up, stow your load. Also, you can sit there and use this very attachment with the panel hook installed and install this 25,000 pound fifth wheel plate. Without removing the panel hook, we can take this fifth wheel with a 25,000 pound capacity and we can use the pin, put it into place, retaining it right in here, and then the other pin right back there that will slide back into the king pin. Once the king pin comes into position, this pin goes across and locks it in. Now, you can see very easily with the 25,000 pound capacity why it's reduced because of the size of this compared to a standard fifth wheel you would see on a road tractor. But for to get moms and pa's camper, perfect. Nice surface area. Again, to get a load off of the road because of the damage done to it where you can't get to anything else, you know, you can use this fifth wheel. Now, this we've seen in our industry for years. And this is very multi, if you really have a heavy load and you think you're gonna go over the 25,000 pound capacity, this sits there, locks in to where you see the kingpin, and then you have either your chains or your U-bolts go up through here, and we go to the fork holders with the hooks on the end of it, which we'll be showing you in just a little bit. Now you not only have that kingpin supported, but you've got the chains coming up underneath that, that floor of the the surface, front surface of the trailer supporting that and you have that higher capacity if you've got more than 25,000 pounds. The other thing that's really nice about this attachment is you can run a snatch block through here and actually two screw pin shackles and actually put other snatch blocks if you want to increase your load in a multi-part from a two-part to a three-part line uh, doing a lift like a heavy coil or something like that. Now, with removing the panel hook with the four three quarter inch bolts, you can simply remove the panel hook, put this attachment into place, and now you have the means with your trailer ball attachment kit that you can do a one and seven eighths, a two, or a two and five sixteenths ball. So if you've got a 38 foot uh, sport fish or you know a car trailer or a leaf trailer and you need to bring it back from the accident scene, you've got that means to do it properly and safely. Now, we're going to take one second, we're going to flip these fork holders, and we're going to show you how we can take this panel hook and actually pick a truck off of the kingpin. Now, using our standard fork holders, all we've done is we've taken our fork holders and flipped them down so that the actual hole is pointing down to the ground. You might have seen Mr. Luciano's uh, video on our trailer and kingpin change that we showed you where we had the fork holder flipped up putting that larger surface if you're using the hook adapter. So here we are, we're actually flipping it down. Now with my pendle hook removed, I can sit there and take my pin and take this attachment to go into the kingpin. Now let's just take a look at this kingpin. This is the actual replacement surface and kingpin for a trailer. And we've gone and we've welded up these tongs onto this. And so it will sit down in here fall into place like this. You then would pin that up and with it pinned you can sit there and just slide right into that fifth wheel and lift it from the fifth wheel. You would come up with your hook adapters on the crossbar and you would actually take the frame, wrap it underneath your axles, come up through your hook, back around your axles and that way if you're picking it right from the rear, which you would be in this case, with the fifth wheel you've got that rear suspension if it's air ride supported. So now what we're going to do is we're going to show you several of the various forms of what you could do with the optional hook adapters or the standard hook adapters. 
Over here we have the optional hook adapter and what's really nice about this is lifting it up I can slide it back and forth. I can actually take this fork holder put it over here and I can get as I'll show you in a little bit the riser is very close with the hooks being about 8 or 10 inches. And yet if I slide it out I've got the hooks now out apart from each other but I can adjust them. That's very good. So if I'm dealing with a uh, you know, Hendrickson suspension, if I'm dealing with a Kenworth suspension, if I'm dealing with an International, I have that means of getting around the shock tower, the suspension, the tire, or maybe even the utility body that's on the back of the frame. Now over here, we've put the standard hook adapter on. There's the pin that fits right in here to keeps it on. And now your crossbar removing the fork holders is just like the old truck hitch. And the nice thing about that is that you go around the corner because in the old days the truck hitch would go like this, the crossbar actually lays level and therefore the vehicle that you're towing remains level. If you have to extend the underlift to get to an attachment, the kingpin is far back, the hook adapter would go on, a chain would come in here and you would tie into these loops that you see on the safety chains holding them right there. And now that locks this point to be in a pivot point and the kingpin or the fifth wheel becomes the sole pivot point. So that's another means of what you can do with that attachment. Now removing the safety pin, I'm going to pull this off and I'm going to go to the fork holder that's over there, the riser. I'm going to have the riser handed to me. And you can see the riser and the riser can go either way. It can go either way onto the towing attachment. You can take it where the hooks will be in close to me. I can take it where the hooks would be apart. It doesn't matter. And the other nice thing about it is it allows me the means of getting additional height on a frame fork. So putting a frame fork here, taking a medium fork and getting additional height depending on if it was like a flat rack and which are very tall, you have that ability to do this with the, for with the fork risers. Now, we've left out two attachments and we've done that on purpose because like all Miller units we have our very favorite towing spot right back here in the back of the wrecker and right here we have the U-bolt attachment which we can pick a vehicle up from the rear and it says rear only picks you put that right into where that spring bolt would be coming down and it just lifts right up into that socket Again, we have our ratchet strap or our chain to hold it down into the uh, attachment. And then, of course, we have our safety chains, which we'll show you in a minute. Over in our other favorite pocket, we have the MCI bus lift. Fits right in there. So if you're doing buses, you've got that round casting at the rear of the front. You simply remove the pin, put the round ring into there, put the pin back into place properly secure the load downward across your crossbar and do your safety checks. Yeah. This is the most versatile attachment that we offer. And we did it with the pivot so that when you take that spring and that spring is actually laying in here, no matter how it articulates up and down a hill in a tow, the spring is always laying in that flat surface. The retaining pin goes over the top of the spring and it keeps it into place, retaining the spring down into here. Of course, the front leading edge is in your pivot joint. What you do by using the pivot spring lift adapter is you are picking at the most forward part of any vehicle that you do. And if it's a real heavy vehicle, we can take some 1,000, 2,000, even 3,000 pounds of weight off the rear drives of the wrecker by using this pinnel hook attachment. So when it really gets to scaling, you're in this place where you're taking our number one selling 5130, which is right behind us, and you're looking at scaling at 34,000, you got a full condo unit, you might be using this pivot spring lift adapter in order to pick up the least amount of weight. In closing, always, always, always make sure that you're retaining the axle, your frame, your cross member, wherever your pick point is, into the crossbar. You can do that with a 10,000 pound strap, 15,000 pound strap. You can do it with a high yield chain. The main thing is that if the tires for any reason touch the ground, you don't want that, that towed vehicle coming out. 
very, very important. That is not safety chaining. That is just securing the load into there. And as you can see behind me, we've got the standard 14 feet A10 chain, half inch, that comes with it. Allows us to be able to put it around an axle, come back, clip it into place, so we're securing the load. Now really, the right way to do this is nice is to come up underneath the crossbar because if it comes up against the crossbar, if the load wants to come forward, you've shortened it up. But if your attachment's way out and you have to come forward of the crossbar, that's just what you have to do. Make sure that you're securing this to a very strong structural part of the cabin chassis or whatever you're towing. You don't want it for any failure to break what you have your safety chain to. So always make sure. Always, always chalk your wheels. It's very, very, very important. I don't care how you do it. I don't care if you use a piece of wood. I don't care how, you know, if it's a piece of wood that you've taken a chainsaw and cut a groove. If you're doing a double pick, you always want to make sure that when you lift something, if your brakes are caged, your drive line's pulled, is that the wheels are chalked at the rear so that that vehicle doesn't roll forward. I can only tell you, we've seen even the most experienced people make this mistake. And when you're underneath something, you have to take every safety venue that you can. And now you know.